the bullet train, or in Japanese, Shinkansen, remains one of the main staples of Japan. There's ramen, there's sushi, there's laser cats, and of course the Shinkansen that can whisk you all the way from Tokyo to Kyoto in just over two hours. In this video, we're going to give you the complete lowdown on using the Shinkansen, including info on new luggage limits that started in 2020. That's coming up soon, but first, why use Japan's fastest train? The Shinkansen has lines all across the country and is the easiest way to travel between major cities. Other options like plane, highway bus, or even driving yourself can be cheaper, but nothing beats the Shinkansen on convenience. What's more, if like us at Tokyo Cheaper, you're interested in keeping your carbon footprint low, then the Shinkansen is the way to go with the lowest carbon emissions. And above all else, who doesn't want to see these beautiful views while speeding past Mount Fuji? Okay, so you've decided you will take the Shinkansen. The next question is, should you buy the Japan Rail Pass? For those unsure of what that is, the JR Pass is the mother of all travel passes that allows you unlimited use of all JR trains across the country. It's possible to get a 7, 14 or 21 day pass, but it's important to note that this time starts from the day of activation, meaning you're not able to split up the time. The clock starts ticking as soon as that pass is activated. It's also possible to buy single tickets for the Shinkansen. So the big question is, do you go with single tickets or the JR pass? Our general rule of thumb is, if you will be doing multiple intercity trips or one long trip, then the JR Pass is worth it. If, however, you're doing just a short one-way trip, then it'll be cheaper to buy a single ticket. Here's a quick example to demonstrate. The seven-day JR Pass costs close to 29,000 yen. A single ticket for a one-way trip from Tokyo to Osaka is around 14,000 yen. So naturally, if you were making just this one trip, there's no need for the JR Pass. On the other hand, if you're taking a round trip from Tokyo to Hiroshima at almost 39,000 yen for single tickets, it's definitely worth buying the pass. Besides the nationwide JR Pass, there are also a number of regional rail passes, which are handy if you are only traveling in one area. For example, the Kansai Wide Area Pass is a great option if you're traveling around the Kansai area, to and from cities such as Kyoto, Osaka, Nara, Kobe, and Himeji. It's important to note though that the JR and regional rail passes do not cover many train and subway lines within cities like Tokyo and Osaka, so they're best used for traveling between cities, not within. All right, so you're eagerly planning your trip to Japan and the Shinkansen you will take. The next question is, where and how do you buy tickets? If you've decided to get the JR Pass, the easiest way to buy it is online before traveling to Japan. See our article linked above for the best place to buy the pass online. Then, once you're in Japan, simply pick up your pass from a ticket office at any major train station once you arrive. If you're using single tickets, you can also buy these at the ticket office or the automated ticket machines. An important thing to know is that the Shinkansen has two sections, reserved and non-reserved seats. With the JR Pass, you can reserve seats for no extra fee at the ticket office, the reserved ticket machine available at some large stations, or online if you bought your pass through the official website. For more flexibility, or if you're using single tickets and don't want to pay extra for reserved seats, you can use the non-reserved section. But we recommend not doing this during busy holiday periods as you may be taking a gamble at whether you get a seat. Finally, when buying tickets, you may notice that there's a more expensive type called the green car. Essentially, this is the first class carriage of the Shinkansen, which provides a little bit more comfort with wider seats. The main thing to know if you go with the green car is, unlike the ordinary cars, all seats in this carriage are reserved. We said we'd talk about the new luggage limits, so it's time to give you the lowdown on everything luggage related. Since 2020, there have been changes to the luggage rules. Anything less than 160 centimeters in total dimension is still perfectly fine to bring on the Shinkansen and can be placed in the overhead storage. 
Any luggage between 160 to 250 centimeters will need a reservation in advance, and anything larger than this cannot be taken on the Shinkansen. For reference, 160 centimeters and under is roughly the same rules that apply to airlines. So if you don't have any oversized baggage on the flight over to Japan, then you will likely be fine on the Shinkansen too. If you do have oversized luggage, then you'll need to make a luggage reservation. This is free. However, because you will be reserving seats with dedicated luggage space in the last row, you need to have a reserved seat. You cannot use non-reserved seating. A luggage reservation can be made at the same time you reserve your seat at a ticket office or ticket machine. If you don't make a reservation, you will be issued with a 1,000 yen fine. Two important things to note is that firstly, these new luggage rules only apply on the Tokaido, Sanyo, and Kyushu lines. So if you're taking one of the other Shinkansen, you can continue to use the available luggage rack with no reservation. Secondly, the new luggage limit doesn't apply to a number of items, even if they are oversized, including prams, wheelchairs, sporting equipment, and musical instruments. By now you've bought your tickets, are all across the luggage rules, and are ready to embark on the Shinkansen. So let's talk about some handy things to know when you're actually riding it. At the station, there will be signboards that show the upcoming trains, the time they leave, and the platform in both Japanese and English. On the platform, there will also be signs to show where each carriage should line up. It's common to eat and drink on the Shinkansen. So, if you're feeling peckish, there's plenty of stores in the station where you can grab something like an ekiben, or if you're feeling a bit cheaper, a convenience store snack. Depending on the Shinkansen, there will be a power socket and there are toilets at the end of the carriage. There's also usually free Wi-Fi in the train, but we can't guarantee how fast it will be. Hopefully by now, you feel ready to take on the Shinkansen. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments and feel free to check out our other videos and the Tokyo Cheapo website for more info on Japan. Bye for now!